Victoria 3 has a wide array of amazing nations to be playing as and contenders for most powerful nation. But there's only one that can be the ultimate most powerful nation, and that is the French. Uh, that's not, I said, I said the French. Nope, nope, that's, no, the French. Oh, come on. Oh, they, there you go. Yeah, that, we're basically bringing back Napoleon and establishing the strongest nation in the game. Make sure to leave a like if we get 6,000 likes. We'll be continuing this campaign and don't forget to subscribe if you like to see more cringe um uh, amazing content like this in the future. France really is one of the strongest nations in Victoria 3 and we're gonna make them the most powerful nation by far in just the first few years so pay close attention guys because I'm gonna try and show you the best path for the French Empire. We start with a few very important journal entries like the divided monarchist. This allows us to go down three separate paths when it comes down to our leadership. One of them is the Bonapartist path. That is the one in which we bring back Napoleon Bonaparte apart then we also have the legitimist and the orleanist depending on which uh, particular type of france you like to have we also have the second journal entry of the conquest of algeria essentially we need to get all of the algerian lands as our own and that's fairly easy we're just basically going to be puppeting everybody very early on in the campaign before we get to that point though we start with 200,000 national revenue which is insane we also start with the biggest and most advanced armed forces that being said our Navy is second greatest after the British Navy, so we need to be careful when it comes down to naval invasions until we get some more units, at least naval units for that matter. Technology-wise, we are a tier one tech nation, so that means we have the best starting technologies overall. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to research water to boiler because we are an industrialized nation and we're going to be continuing to industrialize super fast. I'm going to queue up the uh, joint stock company to get a secondary company early in the campaign as well as the postal savings nationalism and pharmacy in this order pharmacy is going to be really good because it's going to allow us to get public health insurance however we've got other fish to fry until we end up getting public health insurance we started with some of the greatest legislations from day one we've got public schools dedicated police force protectionism interventionalism cultural exclusion even which means that every european heritage as well as every francophone culture is the same like our primary french culture except did, meaning we get rid of massive amounts of otherwise discriminated people. We also start as consequence because of our legislation with quite a few institutions, so we need to get more bureaucracy to advance the institution levels, like to get level 3 education, for example, level 5 law enforcement is required, and so on. Home affairs as well, level 5 if possible, would be perfect, and colonization too. We can quickly just change the production methods for the government administration as well as the philosophy department for the universities, which in turn means we start with 71 innovation rather than 62 or whatever we were starting with before. I also went ahead and I got the gas street lights and just updated the production methods for most of my uh, buildings. We start with uh, seven construction sectors. I'm fairly confident we can actually do more than that. So I'm going to queue up another three because I like round numbers so we can do 10 construction sectors from day one. Current shortages include a lot of iron shortages, grain, fiber, and so on. Grain is not really an issue because we can just change a production method to the soil enrichment farming and then we get all the grain we need but that's going to give us more deficit of fertilizer so we can change half of these for now and after we get some fertilizer plants going we can get more so what i'm going to do is i'm going to queue up a couple of fertilizer plants in lorraine which is where we have sulfur and sulfur is required as an input good for fertilizer plants let's say two of these is good for now we're also going to need to queue up a lot of iron mines and i'm going to say make Rhone my main iron producing state. I'm going to queue up 10 iron mines in there. We might mix around the queue as, well as needed afterwards. Let's go back here. We have some consumption tax on wine and we have consumption tax on liquor. Reality is the French have an obsession for wine. So no matter what, building wine plantations is always going to be a massive profit for us, which is why I'm going to actually keep the consumption tax on there. I'm going to add some more on services and I'm going to add some on luxury clothes. This apparently covers enough of our 
our income so that we don't have a deficit right now also going to cancel the guarantee on the belgians because we will actually be invading the belgians soon enough and let's do our interests here we're going to go into the niger congo ethiopia south africa arabia all of this is actually rightful french clay they just don't know it yet one thing that the british have over us is their vast colonial empire look at the amount of puppets they start with they've got the canadians they've got the australians the indians and this is actually where the big juice is if we manage to make india break away from the british empire it's jover for them now to handle this iron shortage we're going to be importing stuff from uh, our friendly neighborhood americans prussians swedes and everywhere else we can actually import this from we also start with the, the intelligentsia getting suppressed we're going to cancel that we don't want them to get suppressed and we can as the french go for less affair from day one let's go for that this means that we're going to essentially privatize our entire industry but it also reduces our loan interest rate by 25 percent because we're also a great power we also get minus 50 percent loan interest rate from day one as a great power so we're going to end up with minus 75 percent loan interest rate so getting interest is really not going to be any sort of an issue and it's going to allow us to scale up our economy to massive amounts we also have two percent loan interest rate reduction from banking and another two percent from central banking and we're going to get even more once we get mutual funds and so on so essentially we barely pay off any interest on taking loans it's free money everybody I'm also going to go ahead and i'm going to be colonizing everything i possibly can including starting my own little colony in kenya now of course it's going to take 2000 days for these colonies to finish so it's really not amazing but if we especially manage to get all three of the uh, adjacent provinces to the sea tile in kenya then we prevent the british from going into here and this is just like five six million gdp and a lot of future rubber plantations that we deny the british from having eventually we'll get level five colonial affairs so we're going to get a lot more colonial growth rather than 2000 per province days we also do not have a power block so we can start our very first peaceful french power block give it a proper french name and the uh historically accurate french fish known for being very french and uh very fishy that might not be a baguette in his hands in case you're wondering it might be a musket now of course the best type of power block for our situation is going to be the sovereign empire so that we can peacefully unify the world that's that's what a sovereign empire does guys and our primary principle will be vassalization so we get a little bit of extra authority from each vassal since i have extra authority i'm gonna also make uh luxury tax as a mandatory tax and porcelain that's right we're role-playing modern day france and we're taxing the shit out of everyone i mean what are they gonna do revolt or something maybe yeah they they might actually revolt we do start with the ability to get a trade agreement with the americans and that's actually really beneficial for us definitely go for that as your first move once that's done we can import and export everyone and their mamas to the americas making massive amounts of profit in the process american guns of course get them from the best am i right but seriously though paradox should definitely add a uh, guns obsession for the american yankees and dixie cultures i'm just saying make the game be historically accurate is all i want from this all right time to bully the algerians and once you do start the game you're gonna also get the ability to support bonapartist pretenders or Lyon, legitimist pretenders or just go down with the monarchy i'm gonna be supporting the bonapartist pretenders because we all know that is the good guys am i right we're gonna burn that little island to the ground let's also make sure we add primary demands here for banning of slavery and war reparations in case they do back up because they do have fearful which means that they likely will be backing up in this war and they're not actually gonna fight us which is after all the smart choice here circassia is migrating what the hell is going on in russia that you guys just flat out want to leave that place okay i do stand corrected they really want to fight me which is both surprising and not very smart once we do get the conquest of algeria done we stop getting these little raids the french oran has been raided rebuild it their day will come for sure because we're literally attacking them as we speak so their day is almost here really. constantine's done next I actually don't have any motor industry so we're gonna need to queue up one we're gonna build it up in rhone i'm gonna make rhone one of the best states in france just like historically everybody when you think of france nowadays you don't think hope oh, Paris, ha ha, to lose or not to lose. No, you think Rhone. Am I right? It's just logical. All right, let's send way more units than we need to to the front so we can uh, bully Mascara into giving up as well without a fight. Oh, the British have declared me as their rival. Well, guess what, Britain?
button, I'm gonna do the same to you. Why? Because I don't like you, that's why. I was gonna do the same to the Dutch and I don't know, the Ottomans maybe, because I'm gonna be attacking them afterwards anyway. We will need some friends. I'm gonna actually surprisingly get the Russians as my friends and the Russians. It's totally not because I'm a Prussia boo. Come on guys, stop with these silly silly. Why would I, playing as the French, be a Prussia boo? Ha ha ha. Shut up, man. Shut up right now. Okay? Let me play the game I want to play, alright? So what if I like pressure? It's not illegal. The death of Charles X. That's a weird name, Charles X. But sure, I mean, whatever. We're gonna... We're not gonna go for the legitimist, um, progress. <laughs> That's not what's happening here, boys. Wait, we were already on voting with less fair? Hot diggity dog. That actually passed super fast. Now, let's also check the queue because we do need to get more admin buildings. So we're gonna queue up a few of these wherever we have really low taxation. Apparently, that is in language though so we're gonna queue up two three there plus we're gonna get some universities now the reality is guys with universities you want to at the very least have one or two unis around every single state of yours because not only does it give you innovation but it also gives qualifications so that uh, people can work in the whatever industries you want them to be working in and they can be qualified for that so once you have say one or two unis in every state after that get like 15 20 unis in one state like, in my case, that's going to be uh, Ile de France, because that way we get the uh, throughput bonus from having multiple universities in one state. I'm saying this because I've actually seen comments asking, do you build everything in one state or you do, do you build everywhere? It's a combination of both. You don't really need more than two unis in every single state, but you definitely need to have like 20 or so in your main primary state to get the extra throughput bonus, essentially to get more innovation out of the universities in that one state. Oh, oh, did my mascara fall off <laughs> oh that's a really bad joke right there i don't even know where i was going with that but yeah anyway let's uh, bully the other algerians shall we throughout the campaign we do get events such as this one that allow us to either encourage or discourage different claimants to the throne and whatever you decide during these events will either give you more or less bonuses for either bonaparte or leon or legitimist so do make sure you choose carefully when you make your decisions from these particular events if you want to get bonaparte back in charge another thing that will allow us to get more support for bonaparte is returning the ashes of the emperor back to france remember that napoleon died on the island of saint helena some would say that he was poisoned some would say that he was and nobody really knows reality is that he passed away there and by getting the ashes back to france we do get a progress for the bonapartist by 15 or by 40 we're gonna go for the 40 because that's a big amount right there we're way closer now than we were before all right there we go we got the last of the algerian uh, raiding parties which means we can now salute the heroes of Africa, increase progress of Bonapartist by 15, and we get claims on almost all of North Africa, actually on all of North Africa. We can also do Legitimus progress or Orleanus progress, of course. We're gonna go for the Bonapartist progress there. This means we can attack Morocco, we can attack Tunis, and establish a proper hegemony over North Africa. We do have some isolated areas from the colonial possessions. We need to build a port so they're all connected to our main market afterwards and i think it's time that we expand our construction sectors let's build up three more in rhone it's also time that we start our colonial empire so let's uh, first off conquer gaza make it directly a part of our country and use it as a foothold to get into transvaal orange and zulu afterwards we're going to be attacking morocco tunis and so on in north africa eventually but we want to prioritize the south of africa marina arabia because these are just easy pickings and if we don't attack them the british will well, expanding their empire in the process we want to prevent and kind of i don't want to say it but we kind of want to cook the british from actually getting to these provinces before we do oh my god we got minus 20 percent loan interest rate and 20 percent gold reserve for five years yeah we're essentially we got like what two percent interest rate that is just insane dude the best part about the french is that we do have a pretty sizable fleet compared to most nations so doing naval invasions at the early part of the campaign is a no-brainer that's why we're also going to be invading argentina Chile and we're gonna establish ourselves in South America too. Again, it's just basically free lands for the taking and especially Argentina and Chile eventually will get pretty big and after they do get big, they're gonna give us even more money or we can just integrate them. Our choice really. Since we've got South Africa, we can get another declared interest. So let's go for La Plata as I was saying and whilst we're at it, we can do a quick protectorate against Marina King.
Kingdom because this province has 80 coal mines and eventually you will also get some rubber plantations. So Marina is a no-brainer getting this in the early part of the campaign. And you know what? We're just making the world a better place because we're banning slavery and we're making everybody in Marina happy by paying us some tax as well. They need a purpose in life, okay? They need a purpose. Also, guys, I didn't say this before, but if we get 5,000 likes on this video, I'm going to do a brand new Italy campaign where we play as either two Sicilies or Sardinia Piemont and we form Italy. And we're going to play Toll as crazy as them. Plus, if you guys want, but only if I see enough support in the comment section, I was thinking of doing an 1836 to 1936 stream where we play as Prussia continuously until 1936 on speed two or three, depending on how the stream goes, so that I can explain everything, my entire thought process, and basically use that as a overall greatest beginner guide into how to min-max and get like 10 billion GDP as a nation, because we will likely get 10 billion GDP as the Prussians, since we'll be going for Super Germany, and with the current patch, you can actually do Super Germany in three years as Prussia, which is just wild. Marina, more like Murata. Yeah, I don't know what Murata is, it's just... I make up words a lot. Don't don't think about it too much. Let's just pretend Morata means uh, people with funny hands. That's exactly what that means, really. Now, since we did get the uh, condensed engine pumps, one thing has happened, and that is we got way too much iron. So because we have way too much iron, we need to make more construction sectors. We got minus 5% iron, which is huge. So let's get another five construction sectors in uh, Rhone. Now, we do have some shortages of tools also. So let's import a little bit for now. And let's also queue up some more tools. I'm going to actually outlay one of these tools in Rhone to get that established and then afterwards I'm gonna just queue up another four more right after the universities although I might bring these up before the universities let's see how it goes and who would have expected uh, we're winning this as if there's nothing in front of it it's literally taking candy from a little kid right there and look at that we got less affair so that changes everything because with less affair we can get a second company of course we're gonna be going for the United Rhone metal producers plus we're gonna disband the initial company because we don't have enough prosperity for that so we're gonna get a second one which is gonna be the uh, sulfur slash coal mine here that's also gonna give us some fertilizer plant throughput we also have a unique french one that we're gonna get later down the line it's not a priority right now Dariago, we only have 20 infamy so that means we have so much more infamy we can uh, spread the love around and i'm looking at you argentina you need a lot of love don't you let's go ahead and make sure you uh give us some war reps whilst we're at it and you ban your slavery so we're improving your country we're just literally making the world a better place i'm telling you we're the good guys here guys totally not making my own colonial empire to counter the british colonial that's not what's happening here at all the trick here got oh my god we got louis napoleon bonaparte oh he's he is so back right now it's insane now if you guys don't know who this is he is the son of the brother of napoleon and he is known as napoleon the third bonaparte he was the emperor of france between 1852 and 1870 2nd of December 1852, 4th of September 1870, and he's the one we need right now. Look at that ideology. What does it say? It says the good guys. Ignore the fact that it's uh, also strongly endorsing autocracy and oligarchy. That's just not important right now, okay? Shut up. I'm also gonna give him leadership of the political party because he definitely needs to play a little bit more of a part in our country, that's for sure. Perhaps he has learned his... Le he definitely learned it. He's a... He is a a lesson learner guys he is a hundred percent a lesson learner all right let's go ahead and make sure these guys are ready for the war we're about to extinguish the flame of the argentinians far too long have the people of argentine insulted our existence by existing themselves it's an it's a massive insult i'm upset it needs to end argentine you scumbags progressive orleanist decreases by one every month uh yes yes please oh my god look at that we're literally at half right now that is just beautiful world's fastest naval invasion imaginable let's go ahead and queue up uh, a couple more of everything required to uh, continue our industrial output so let's say three more of these iron mines two more tooling workshops and even some uh, logging camps we're gonna need in uh, Rhone for that matter they three more but before anything else we do need to expand their railways in Rhone I'm gonna do twice the expansion in Rhone so we have enough infrastructure for the nearby future and I also forgot to make a port in Lorenzo Marquez so we actually have it connected to the rest of the country. I'm gonna also appease my government by uh, going for free trade. Despite protectionism giving us some uh, tariffs income, free trade will allow us to trade more 
50% increase in trade volume, as well as we get a bureaucracy cost reduction from trades with nations that we don't have a trade agreement with reduced by 50%, which is a huge deal actually. Honestly, at this point, it wouldn't be a looty video without at least a little bit of invading into Yemen. And as mentioned before, our third company is going to be the unique French Champagne de Mine d'Anzant, which is doubling down on our coal production, that's for sure. One small step for France, one massive leap for the French Empire. <laughs> I'm gonna celebrate this by having some uh, Japanese beer, as all Frenchmen should celebrate with a little bit of Japanese beer. That's what real Frenchmen do, I'm telling you. Totally not uh, depression drinking here. Now, honestly, Oman is probably my favorite puppet in the Middle East, because not only do we get access to uh, Persia afterwards, but we also get the juicy areas of Zanzibar, which are a part of Oman. And this is honestly the gateway to getting some of the best lands in Africa. Okay, looks like the British also canceled their proclaimed guarantee on the uh, Southern African state. So it's time that we start an incursion in that direction too. So guys, I highly recommend when you're playing Victoria 3 to eat some barbecue. Chicken barbecue mm, with some baguette and uh, cucumbers. Holy shit, is this delicious. Mm. Oh my God, how disgraceful. I'm eating whilst our great Emperor Louis Napoleon Bonaparte is back. Well, technically this is the first time that he arrived as our emperor. But the point is that we got Bonaparte Dynasty back on board. He has the Restorer modifier, which gives him 50 popularity. And we have the greatest flag. Look how beautiful this flag is. It just screams Bonaparte to me, really. Now, in order to cement the house of Bonaparte, we need to make sure that we get enough support. And once we reach 120, we don't need to worry about any supposed other fictional dynasty. There can only be one emperor, and his name is Ludi. I'm a, a Bonaparte. I meant Bonaparte. I mean, to be fair, Ludi Bonaparte sounds pretty pretty freaking good to me if you ask me as of patch 1.7 we can also do multiple wars at the same time so we're going to be taking advantage of that and we're going to be bringing Chile into the fray now seeing as the ottomans are in fact the sick man of europe i think it's also time for us to get back our north african holdings which uh, we totally held at some point guys come on i'm not just making this stuff up and i'm also going to be transferring tripoli to me because tripoli everybody knows is also rightful french clay ask him to give me war reps and what else liberate bulgaria Oh yeah, that sounds really good actually to me. You know what? I'm also going to be liberating Iraq. But yes, I am essentially just uh, taking advantage of the fact that the Ottomans are insanely weak and their units are not going to be a match for me. Give me my colonies, Ottoman. Give it to me right now. Avic lit naval invasion number one and naval invasion number two. Afro-Antillian mass migration. I think these guys are a Francophone, so they are an accepted culture actually. Oh, I forgot about Haiti. Maybe I need to bring Haiti back into the fold as well there you go we have successfully landed in tripoli now let's uh, go ahead and bait them by attacking their capital nick no one's gonna expect a thousand naval invasions at the same time because there's not many nations that can do that in victoria 3 but guess what we can we definitely can oh Sacre bleu. This is not Glutensteiner. Nice one, Britain. Omani, Trucial States, Hormuz, Ivory Coast. Yeah, you know what I'm gonna do to you? I'm gonna take your colonies. You know what? I feel like taking your Canadian possessions. That should be really good, because then uh, I'm gonna get all that income from the future massively overpowered nation of Canada, won't I? Plus, this was also rightful French clay a while back, so it's time we take it back for ourselves. It kind of chose a really great moment, because I don't have too much uh, infamy to spare so i'm only gonna take very limited amounts of stuff sadly cape colony is a good one too so let's go for that as well oh i cannot add upper canada let's um uh, let's add south australia why not <laughs> prevent the australians from unifying i guess diplomatic play in exchange for obligations oh my god yes let's check what kind of shortages we have now so we need a little bit more tools paper cloth and furniture thing is we also need to finish this war against the uh turks as soon as possible so i'm gonna need to send another naval invasion in the southern parts here of turkey to quickly destroy and utterly crush these bastards trade agreement from russia oh my god you guys are the best like i take back anything bad i might have said about you in the past which probably was quite a bit classic british invasion getting stalled <laughs> see this is what happens when you don't get help from the americans britain but you know what they're our friends wait they're 
even invading the Russians in multiple places? Oh my god, Britain, you are nasty. <laughs> Finally, we managed to get a hold of the capital of Turkey so we can piece them out once and for all, so we can focus on the British, which has really taken a toll on our economy right now. We had to go on a high taxation, which is not optimal. But hey, the Russians managed to land in Britain out of all the possible outcomes. The Russians did it, and we're now making big progress in taking our war goals. That's why if we manage to hold on to Istanbul for long enough and we peace out the Turks, then we're going to be absolutely golden in the war against the uh, British because we can use another 120 units on those fronts afterwards. To be fair, the AI kind of chose the best moment to attack me, I'll be honest. I'm kind of impressed with the AI's uh, decision making right there. Set, but impressed. And we're capitulating the British. Oh my god. Oh, is that London? Is that why? Oh, dude, this is so good. I cannot believe this. This is one of the best starts to the French campaign ever. We're literally taking all of Canada, parts of Australia, and massively weakening the British Empire from day one, essentially. And I barely even try-hearted in this one. Like, I genuinely did not even start this with any idea of try-harding it, really. There you go. We got liberated half of the Ottoman Empire, and we conquered the other bits for ourselves. And now we can send these armies to fight against the British in what is likely the ultimate battle of times. Come on, baby. You can do this. Come on. 63% advantage here. We got 189,000 against 38. They're not even defending their capital. What is this all about? Oh my god, dude. I am so freaking winning this. This is just the greatest freaking day ever. Honestly, this is by far my favorite French campaign I've had in Victoria 3 for quite some time now. And check it out, boys. Oregon transfer, Nova Scotia, everything in North America with the exception of uh, the actual British domains and Upper Canada, which we're going to get in the next war. And look at the division here in Australia as well. We are the ultimate ultimate cuck actual ultimate cucks boys and our economy just skyrocketed we're gonna be uh, tripling our economy as consequence let's go ahead and uh, get a buttload more construction sectors oh i forgot i also have cape colony as well oh this is just uh, the best my dude holy snaps they changed their name to quebec oh my god way better than uh lower canada man this is the real name of this colony actually it's quebec boys it's quebec okay whether you like it or not it's quebec hey, Lady, you don't pronounce like that you said of a beach. Shut up, man. How do you know? Uh, I'm from France, mon ami. Oh, really? Name all the French provinces right now. Do it right now, Frenchy boy. There's a lot of production methods we need to update now. Oh, and I forgot we also can get some gold mines in our newly conquered lands. Unfortunately, because we've got 50 infamy, we do have to stay low and uh, not attack anyone for the foreseeable future. At least not for, say, a good two, three years, maybe. And yes, we do need even more construction sectors. Let's queue up even more. It's also high time that we create our own power block of course ho oh, oh, baguette with the obviously upset french lion as our figure vassalization sovereign empire to dispute the sovereignty of the british empire and you might be wondering why didn't you form this 11 years ago well i did but then i went downstairs and restarted my uh save with the new one because i forgot what i said and then i forgot to actually redo the empire again so kind of a waste of 11 years but we're not going to talk about that too much it's fine it's it's okay <laughs> i could have had four principles by now and the bright side, we're getting quite a few mandate because we got uh, some minor power members and we're going to get even more mandate because we're going to get even more minor powers in our block. I'm looking at some very juicy ones in South America, especially. I mean, come on, everybody really knows that Venezuela was part of the French colonial empire. It's just common knowledge. If you don't know that, where have you been living this whole time? And this is the world's fastest naval invasion and destruction of a country until the Americans do it better than me. Am I right? <laughs> Yep, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty right about that. Actually. All right, let's go back and get more construction sectors because uh, we have way too much money right now. So let's max out the ones in uh, Paris and let's get another eight over in uh, Burgundy. This should be enough. Now we have to queue up a buttload of iron mines as well. So let's get 10 more iron mines, a lot of tooling workshops. I think some steel works we might need as well to make up for the extra steel required. So let's get, say, two more in uh, Rhone also. And then let's just basically spam the schnapps out of logging 
logging camp we need more than we can possibly get honestly like logging camps i'm just gonna build up to maximum in every single province and then i'm still gonna need more you might be wondering ludi why are you not building like civilian stuff you have demand here for grain you've got demand for clothes um it's not a priority first off i want to build up my industry and second off if it's really that in high demand then the private sector is gonna build it they're not building it because it's not in that high of a demand so it's pointless then. and there you have it we got the french protectorate of venezuela which means because they are a minor power we get even one more mandate point as consequence for our power block minus 1000 wood this is just insane dude <laughs> like why why do we need so much wood all the freaking time <laughs> let's also attempt to go for public health insurance this is going to be awesome if we manage to get it it's going to increase our standard of living by so much and i'm also going to be using my uh, road maintenance uh, decree all around the areas in which i'm building i should have done this also earlier i kind of forgot as well plus in roan because we've got most of our resource and manufacturing industry and i'm going to set up the resource industry edict as well as i'm going to get the greener grass campaign so we get more migrants coming into this province we got 200 population available for work but that's not going to be enough because we're going to make roan burgundy and just the mountain areas here our main industrial heartlands as for the newly liberated nations of iraq bulgaria and soon to be uh, syria they will join our sovereign empire whether they like it or not come on chili just accept i don't want to have to go to war you scumbags you actual freaking scumbag i'm gonna take your shit and i'm also gonna make you pay war reparations you happy now chili you could have gone down the easy path boy the eternal house of bonaparte the louis napoleon bonaparte is without peer legitimacy popularity for five years and we did divided monarchist uh journal entry now we've got some new journal entries including confederation of canada <laughs> I love that. I actually love that. But yeah, no more uh, disasters, no more radicals in our country for now. And we're also going to be continuing to lower autonomy because we also need to get uh, Africa under control. Well, to be fair, we need to get Algeria united more than anything else. I wish I could have more influence because then my infamy would decay a little bit faster. But sadly, I've reached the amount of rivals I can get right now. So yeah. Next, I'm going to be attacking uh, China. I want to take Beijing for myself because they there's a, let's just say, a pretty high amount of population that would love to work in my country afterwards. And they're just free for the taking. Their units are absolute dog schnapple, easy to destroy in a combat. I do think that this is also one of the best starts that I've had. So I'm going to make the save game available to anyone that wants to. You can just go on my Discord and you can get it for yourself. And if you enjoy this video and you want to maybe even see this done into a second part for the French campaign, let's get 6,000 likes on the video in the first week. So I know that you're interested in seeing that second part. Don't forget to also subscribe. I love you all and I'll see you in the next one.